Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I have a pretty fun exercise for you guys to work on here. And basically what I'm referring to is the right side of the screen. We have this magical grid of cells. And what this grid allows you to do is to kind of pan your finger across the screen, across the device here. And each one of these cells are able to kind of track exactly where your finger is touching like this. And if you move your finger across the screen really, really quickly, you'll see a trail of all of these cells that are kind of noticing where you are touching there. And then finally, when you let go of your finger like that, the cell sort of just animates back to its original location. And then if you, you know, drag your finger across again, you get the same type of animation. So really cool stuff. And I would actually consider giving this as an algorithm test for a, you know, perhaps junior developer applying for an iOS position. So what is the point of learning how to do all of this is probably what you guys are wondering. Well, basically the animation and the algorithm behind all of this is very, very similar to how a particular dating application works such as Tinder. And I know some of you guys have probably used an application like this before. And the moment you swipe across one of these images, these image views right here are able to track exactly where your finger is touching. And the moment you swipe up, down, right, or left, it sort of animates the alpha and its X, Y coordinates based on where your finger is. And then you can animate it off the screen when you let go of your, uh, your finger on the device. So once you are able to learn how to kind of make this grid right here, you're going to have a much better idea as to how to build out one of these Tinder applications. So having said that, let's get started with how to build this grid here. And then we'll talk about how to animate these cells individually. Okay, so right now I'm gonna show you guys how to render out this grid right here by using this single view application called Magical Grid. And inside of the view controller, you can kind of see that it does absolutely nothing. So hence running this app right now, all you get is this white screen right here. So hopefully you guys are familiar with how to create a single view application by now. And uh, I want to start off today's lesson by doing something very, very simple, which is to create a red view. And let's just use the empty constructor of UI view like that. And I want to render out some kind of view inside of my application. For example, a red box at the very, very top left corner. So I'm going to set this red views background color to dot red, as well as setting its frame to be something such as CG rect. And the constructor will use X, Y within height. X, Y will be zero within height will be this arbitrary value of 100. And then finally, you need to add it into the view controllers view by add sub view with red view being your parameter to pass in. Okay. So we're running this app now, you'll see a nice looking red box in the very top left corner, just like that. So pretty simple stuff and a pretty good way to start off today's lesson. Now, the next thing we want to do is to uh, render out more boxes in the horizontal direction. And I will be doing that with a for loop here. So a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to use a for loop here and use for i in zero to perhaps five and just print out i. So I can show you guys what a for loop does. I know not a lot of you guys are, or not every one of you guys are uh, familiar with this for loop style. So let's just print out zero, one, two, three, four, five in the console below. And what I want to do now is to move all of this code and put it inside of this for loop instead and run it one more time. So basically we're going to add the red view in the view controller roughly uh, five or six times and they're all going to land on top of each other because the x y position is the same for each red view and the way to alter that is to change the x value to something a little bit you know more clever here i'm going to use the value of i times 100 like so and now if i run this application again it will uh, draw more red boxes inside of the horizontal direction like that. Okay, so you can't really tell that these are actually different boxes right now. So I'm going to modify the program to give these red views a different random color right here. 
So let me just do that by calling this function called random color, random color. And what is random color here? Well, I will have to create this function below, perhaps using file private function of random color. This needs to return a UI color. So the color to return is to execute this constructor of UI color and we will use red, green, blue, and alpha. And this last parameter is going to have an alpha of one. And the question now is what exactly is red, green, and blue here? So let's create red simply by using DRAND of 48. And basically DRAND gives you a double random number from zero to one. And to make sense of all of this, you have to actually cast it into a CG float like that. Hence giving us what red needs to be. And if I copy this two more times, I can get green like this. And then down here will be the blue color. Finally, pasting these two values into the UI color constructor, we get random color like this. And then when you run the app now, each one of your red views will have a random color and then creating some kind of separation like this. All right, so pretty good stuff. And the next thing I wanna show you guys how to do is to actually create these red boxes based on how wide the screen is. So the way to do that is to perhaps set the number of red boxes that you want to render on a horizontal row. And I'm going to say let num view per row equals something. And for this grid right here, I believe I'm using a value of 15. So there's roughly 15 boxes inside of a row. Okay. So based on that value, we can kind of determine how many iterations of this loop that we have to go through. And basically this needs to be say num view per row. All right. And now the only thing that we are missing is to modify the width and height values so that they are smaller than 100. And the question is, how do we figure out what the width and height need to be? And it's a very simple calculation of using the view frame width divided by num view per row. Okay. So that gives you a very, very small number. And in order, in order for this calculation to work here, uh, num view per row needs to be turned into a CG float via this little uh, casting guy right here. And this is now going to be our width value, which I'll pa uh, paste in here for width and height, and also this multiplier guy right there. Okay. So I can try to run this, but you kind of see how the binary operator between this integer and this CG float isn't exactly going to work. So I'm going to cast the I into a CG float as well, giving us compatibility between the width and the I parameter. And then running this application now, you'll see a grid of cells that, uh, you know, they're being rendered out horizontally and we have 15 cells inside of this individual row right here. So the next question is, how do I get this to kind of render out vertically as well? For example, this right here is rendering out these rows and then rendering out vertically in a downward direction. So this is very, very simple as well. If I wrap all of this right here, this for loop inside of another for loop, I can get this effect by using for J in zero to perhaps let's say 20. I'm going to include this entire for loop inside of this outer for loop here. And how am I going to use this J value now? Well, it's very simple by modifying the Y, I will say J, say CG float and cast the J into a float and then times the width variable like that. And once I run this, uh, each one of these squares are going to render out uh, horizontally first and then vertically kind of like that. So that's kind of how you get a vertical grid. And if you modify the 22, perhaps 30, you'll get enough cells to cover the vertical span of your device. And uh, depending on how big your device is, you might have to modify these values to be a little bit different. All right, so the final bit of you know graphic rendering to kind of apply here is the black line between each one of these cells here. And so that's very, very easily done by including a border color on your cells here. 
And so this red view guy, if I wanted to change the red view to some other name by hitting Command, Control, and E, I can just say V like that. And the reason why I don't want to call it red view is because these are no longer red views. So this can actually be called a cell instead. So let's say cell. And let's see, one more time, cell view perhaps. That might be a better name. Uh, it depends on how you want to call your variables. So cell view dot layer dot border. We will give it a border width of 0 0.5. Then to give it that black color, I'll say border color equals UI color dot black dot CG color. And these border color values expect a CG color. So you actually need the CG color out of the black instead of the raw UI color. And so having done these two for loops like that and setting the color, the random color and the border color, you get a very, very nice grid like this right here. So the next thing I want to kind of kind of show you here is how to actually determine where you are touching on the screen here. And that's the last thing I'll talk about before I leave you for today. And I'm going to say view add gesture recognizer. And this gesture will be a UI pan gesture recognizer. And this constructor will take in a target of self like that. And then this is a pound selector with some kind of function called handle pan. And we are going to close off this method with that last parentheses. Handle pan, what is this guy? Well, you create it as a function and inside of this handle pan guy, uh, you are actually past the parameter in which you are kind of panning across the screen here. So you can call it gesture like that and use a UI pan gesture recognizer like so. And then inside of this gesture guy, you can actually get the location of where you're touching by calling location. And yet you just have to pass it in some kind of view. And right here, we'll say let location equals that. And then finally, printing out the location like so, you'll get exactly the x, y values of where your finger is located. So location right here gives you back a CG point. And CG points is a simple struct containing x and y value. So right here, if I move down like that, I should be able to get the location here. So let me see it right there. There we go. If I move across, you can kind of see the x value changing like that you see the x value changes and if i move down like that you see the y values change instead of the x values so there you go all right so that's going to wrap it up for today's video in the next lesson i'm going to show you guys how to exactly detect which view you're touching as you're panning your finger across the screen and then once we're able to figure that out we're going to apply some very nice animation to that particular view so that we can zoom it in and then zoom it back out. And then finally, if you are interested in more Swift lessons, you can check out the Instagram course using the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining today and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.